In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. My dear spiritual family, we have a problem. I don't want you to take this personally, because it is not personal. In other words, the problem I'm speaking of today is not exclusive to the Holy Trinity community in Raleigh or those who are watching from beyond. It is a problem for all mankind throughout the ages. We don't know how to get along with each other. We can't seem to find a sustained sense of peace about ourselves or satisfaction. There's always something longing within us, some lack within us. A sudden mood swing can come along out of nowhere, it seems, and we just can't seem to master it. How ironic this is. We spend millions and billions of dollars and euros and pesos, whatever the currency is, on trying to be happy. We use illegal drugs, recreational drugs, we call them misuse of alcohol, all sorts of entertainment. Some are quite questionable. We spend all this money on these things, not to mention the mental health community, which we are keeping very busy, who are labeling and diagnosing, diagno, diagnosing all our infirmities and anxieties and irrational fears. Yet despite all these resources, all the programs, all the lectures, all the books, all the podcasts designed to help with our well-being, we can't seem to find a sustained peace. Mankind, throughout the ages, throughout its tortured history, has never been without conflict and crisis, war, even from day one, out of paradise, the original family, Adam and Eve, because of pride, because of envy, because of jealousy. The two boys couldn't get along. The, the Cain slew his brother Abel because Abel was raised up before him and he couldn't deal with it. So he murdered him. What's wrong with us? Well, let me tell you what I believe. I believe every problem, whether it's eternal, internal, or a family feud, or a more complex geopolitical problem, brother against brother, nation against nation, I believe every problem is a spiritual problem. We are fallen, my friends. Our inner eye, called the noose, is darkened. The, our thinking is disfigured. Even the synapses in our brains are fallen. We don't interpret things right. We don't process things right or correctly. We go to extremes. We jump to conclusions. And underlying all our dysfunctions and disorders, to me, is one root cause. And that is sin. Amartya. What is sin? It is a state contrary to nature. But unlike in the West, it is not a matter of guilt. Guilt is hardly even a word in the Orthodox lexicon. It is not a matter of guilt. Rather, it is a matter of illness. Sin came into the world through one man, and it has infected his progeny, all mankind ever since is infected with that sin. It is the ultimate pandemic. And to me, there is only one inoculation to deal with it. Allow me, if you will, to direct your attention to the last line in today's gospel lesson. This is our Lord speaking. The very last line. From that time, Jesus began to preach, saying, 
repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. It's interesting. Jesus begins, this is Jesus beginning his public ministry. And it is the same message, repent for the kingdom of God is at hand, as his predecessor, his forerunner, his cousin, St. John the Baptist. His message was the same. Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. In fact, the Lord's final instructions before he ascended into heaven, he told his apostles, repent. Teach people to repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. How important is repentance? There's this uh, fanciful story, I don't know if you've heard it before, of an angel who was trying to, I don't know, gain his wings or reach the certain status of angelhood or something. And uh, the Lord assigned him to go down to the earth and find the most precious gift. And the angel said, that shouldn't be too hard. He goes down and he finds himself, where else? In a battlefield. And he sees a soldier who is wounded right there in the line of fire. One of his friends comes out of hiding, go, and then his rescuer, that rescuer, the soldier bringing him back, he gets shot himself. And the angel has this magic box to bring back to God what he thinks is the most precious gift. So he takes a drop of blood that fell from that rescuer soldier, and he brings it back to God. And the Lord opens the box and says, ah, this is sacrifice of a very precious gift, but I'm afraid it's not the most precious gift, uh, little angel. You're going to have to go back. The angel was taken aback a little bit, but uh, still determined. He goes back, and he finds himself in this uh, poverty-stricken, disease-ridden community. And he sees this missionary woman giving all she has for these people. And then she herself is about to succumb to death. And the little angel takes out his box and catches her last breath, this dedicated woman, and brings it back to God and said, oh yes, angel, this too is indeed precious, very precious, very precious. <laughs> but um, you know what? You know, it's not the most precious. Now the angel is uh, starting to get uh, confused or a little depressed maybe. He, he goes back down to earth and he's thinking, I don't have a clue. I don't know what else to do. And he finds himself in this dark corner of the earth in a very dark neighborhood. And he finds this man who lived a life of thievery and uh, just no good. And uh, he's thinking to himself, I'm not going to find anything worth here. You know, what, what is this? Why, why am I here? And, but he, just out of curiosity, he follows this forlorn man. The man goes back to his little apartment. And he's conflicted, the man. He's conflicted, and he's thinking, and he's praying, and he's... Uh, and he goes through some, rummages through some of his stuff, and he pulls out an icon that he forgot about, and it was uh, some, a gift from his yaya. And he puts it on the wall, this man who lived a life of profligacy, and this well of emotion, as he's staring at the icon, this well of emotion comes surging within his breast and, and up to through his throat and into his forehead and he was thinking what what is this feeling I, am i going to die is this death and then all of a sudden all that that emotion all that feeling came down in the form of a tear and the angel caught the tear and brought it back to god the god opened the box and he said Yes, little angel, indeed, this is the greatest gift of all, the most precious gift 
This tear of repentance brings joy in heaven. It opens up the gates of heaven. Now, lest you uh, get too sentimental and you think, oh, so tears, uh, the tears, when I have tears, it, not all tears are under salvation. If you would have seen me at 7 o'clock last night watching the Cleveland Browns get demolished, <laughs> I would have been lying there in a fetal position with tears running down. Those tears are not salvific, I promise you. Let me just end with this. In order for us to truly repent, my friends, we have to understand how serious our sins are. We have to be educated about sin. Either that or we have to realize how holy God is. I don't know if we can ever fathom that. When determining sin, do not judge yourselves by your own moral code. Do not lean on your own understanding of what sin is. That's a Christianity on your own terms. Let me just suggest to you, just for a start, read Matthew, the Gospel of Matthew, just two chapters, chapter 5 and chapter 6. It won't take long. I don't know if you've ever read it. Read it. Make 2024 a year where your spiritual lives step up a bit. And keep in mind, repentance is the beginning and the middle and the end of our life in Christ. God bless you today.